From Illinois Public Media News, this is 217 Today. I'm Steve Mork. It's Monday, August 5th. Coming up, we'll learn how farmers are using drones over farm fields and ranch land to make their operations more efficient. That story in just a few minutes. But first, these headlines. When local schools start in mid-August, some familiar faces will be missing among the teachers. IPM's Emily Hayes has more. Kylie Miller is switching school districts this year from Champaign Unit 4 to Prairie View Ogden District 197. She says she is looking forward to working closer to home and trying a different school environment. It's much smaller, um, so it'll be a much different setting than I'm used to. I've gone from a school that had 400 plus kids down to now a school that's going to have 75. So I'm excited for some difference in that. 28 certified teachers resigned from Unifor schools, the district reported in late July. 32 teachers were appointed. Teacher retention was up in Champaign last year, according to the State Board of Education, but the average is slightly lower than the state. I'm Emily Hayes with IPM News. The Environmental Protection Agency has issued an emergency fuel waiver for four states, including Illinois, to help alleviate gasoline shortages. Juan Pablo Ramirez Franco has more. Federal regulations require gasoline sold in Chicago to have low rate vapor pressure in order to reduce summertime air pollution. But severe storms last month took a major source of low vapor pressure gasoline in the region offline. Brian Arbacheski with the Respiratory Health Association says the EP's fuel waiver is bad news for local air quality. Allowing gasoline to have a higher vapor pressure means it evaporates faster, more goes into the air, And that means there's more ingredients to cook in the hot summer sun to make caustic ozone gas, which people are going to breathe. The fuel waiver runs through August 20th. Juan Pablo Ramirez Franco, WBEZ News. Illinois tax revenues are off to a robust start during this first full month of the state's fiscal year, despite upticks in inflation and unemployment. Dave McKinney has more. The state's fiscal year starts in July, and new data shows tax revenues for the month jumped by nearly $400 million more from levels a year ago. That's according to the nonpartisan budget analysis arm of the legislature. Driving the revenue uptick was a $300 million plus year over year jump in personal income tax revenues during July. But two other primary sources of money for the state, corporate income taxes and sales taxes, were down from 12 months ago. That tax activity came as the state logged a 5% unemployment rate and inflation in Chicago stood at 3%. Both are up from a year ago. This is Dave McKinney. Still to come, we'll learn how farmers are using drones over farm fields and ranch land to make their operations more efficient. That story is coming up next on 217 Today. Next time on The 21st Show, It's well known global warming is changing our environment and our weather, but what's it doing to us? That's the question neuroscientist Clayton Page Alder set out to answer in his new book, The Weight of Nature, How a Changing Climate Changes Our Brains. I'm Brian Mackey, and that's next time on The 21st Show. Join us. You're listening to 217 Today. I'm Steve Mork. Drones flying over Midwestern fields are likely to become a more typical sight. Farmers are finding that the remotely piloted aircraft can do everything from spraying fields to monitoring livestock. As Harvest Public Media's Michaela Voris reports, experts say drones are becoming an important tool in farmers' toolboxes. Jeremiah Gebhardt stands on his family farm in rural Salisbury, Missouri, demonstrating a T-30 drones sprayer system by watering a nearby field. So we'll see what it looks like. I'm actually going to fly it a little lower than normal just because of the wind. Buying any new farm equipment can be expensive, so adding drones was not a decision that Gebhardt made overnight. And I, I came up that if we applied our own aerial spraying fungicide on our ground, plus I could do some for some other farmers in the area, I thought it'd be worth it. Gebhardt uses drones to spray his corn, soybean, and wheat fields. He first encountered the technology while in college at the University of Central Missouri. 
Then after I graduated, I met the owner of Agrispray, and um, it was actually at Mizzou um, Crop Management Conference. And I saw his demo, and I'm like, man, that may be something I want to get into. Agrispray Drones began building and selling drones, mostly for agriculture, in central Missouri in 2019. Jordan Sayer, a key account manager, says increasing demand has helped the company grow. I started in 2022 as employee number five, and now there's 25 of us, and we went from about a 6,000 square foot building to our um, 30,000 square foot building here in Boonville, Missouri. Farmers adopt technology that they know will ultimately help their business, says Doug Hauser. He's a digital agriculture extension specialist from Iowa State University. And Hauser says he spends a lot of time talking with farmers about drones. Why is there interest in extension for the drone technology? Because farmers are asking. Uh, every conference, every meeting I go to, I find farmers that are asking, you know, what's the latest technology and trends? Can I do this? Can I do that? In a 2021 survey from Iowa State, 21% of farmers reported using drones, while more than 30% said that they plan on using drones in the future. Drones help save money for farmers, partially by getting closer to plants and lessening chemical loss. Safety is another benefit, says Kevin Knorr, owner and CEO of Volatent Drone Technology Solutions in Dunbar, Nebraska. Knorr says farmers applying chemicals from sprayers often drive right through the chemicals, making exposure more likely. Every time they turn around, they turn right back around in it. You know, there may be cabin filters and whatnot that keep that out, but can we fully trust that the, that operator is not in it? While drones do have their shortcomings, such as limited battery life and restrictions on the chemicals that they can spray, a big plus for many farmers is convenience. Sean B. Dub Barstow is a drone flight instructor at Utah State University. He says farmers are especially pleased to find out drones could make it easier to check livestock. The fun thing for us is when we do a little workshop, a farmer comes up and says, wait a minute, are you saying there's two feet of snow on the ground? I have to go check my water. I can get out of my truck, fly my drone over, check my water, and then fly right back and not get wet? I'm like, yeah. In order to safely and legally fly drones, farmers do need access to training. Back in Missouri, Jeremiah Gebhardt says he got the assistance he needed when he bought his first drone a couple of years ago from Agrispray. You need to be able to fix the drones yourself in that field when you have a breakdown. You, and it's important when you're operating any piece of machinery that you understand how it works. Gebhardt says using drones is a learning process, but he's found every year he's been able to spray his fields more efficiently. For Harvest Public Media, I'm Michaela Voris. Harvest Public Media is a collaboration of public media newsrooms in the Midwest and Great Plains. And finally, in your forecast from meteorologist Andrew Pritchard, mostly sunny skies today, a high of 91. Tonight's partly cloudy, a low of 72. And tomorrow, partly cloudy. Chance of shower or thunderstorm, a high of 92 degrees, with heat index values of 100 degrees possible. And tomorrow night, it's cloudy, a low of 65. That's it for today. 217 Today is produced by Stephanie Mosqueda. Reporting today contributed by Emily Hayes, Juan Pablo Ramirez Franco, Dave McKinney, and Michaela Voris. Music by the Kilbourne Alley Blues Band. Reginald Hardwick is our news director. I'm Steve Mork. 217 Today is a production of Illinois Public Media. Thanks for listening. Stay safe. And we'll talk to you again tomorrow.